Karim. The security of energy supply is one of the key topics for Siemens Gas and Power. Right. Now we're here in the Middle East in Abu Dhabi. In this region there are some unique challenges and opportunities when it comes to having a secure energy supply. How, how do you approach that around here? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And every country has its own story and its own unique requirements, but all of them do need security of supply of electricity because that's what uh, fosters the development and keeps the economy running yep. and it's also very very critical for so many things including quality of life, healthcare and so on. Economic development, uh, you name it. Absolutely. And we really look at each country uh, on its own right. So um, if I just give you some examples, there are countries which has um, deep need of uh, power but with a certain fuel, a type of fuel, right? And fuel availability is, uh, is, is an aspect here. Yep. Uh, this will be tackled in a completely different way than other countries where perhaps it's a local issue that you have and okay. not, not a national one. And um, Siemens is actually able, uh, through its very wide portfolio, to tackle most of these problems, if not all of them. And then this morning, I saw you going through the... Right. The, the, the range of solutions in the entire right. supply chain that you guys offer. And you were talking about kind of the, I suppose the mid-term and the, the short-term and the mid-term. And again, security of supplies, I need energy now or I need to transition to something else in the future. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And we're actually standing here just in front of this uh, uh, beautiful chart that tries to put things together. Uh, you have on one hand side the security of supply, the need for energy that, yeah. that needs to be there every day. This needs to be balanced with uh, renewables and the future of carbon-free and uh, environmental friendly energy systems. And the way we, we do that is uh, you need to go in, in sync and uh, in a very um, um, synchronized way. So what we do is we look short term yeah. and on the short term we try to do a lot around making existing energy assets green more friendly. So you really work on upgrading, you really work on uh, improving the efficiency, you really work on shifting from uh, coal to yep. gas or from very intense uh, CO2 uh, ad asset uh, into less... To make it more efficient. Uh, absolutely. That's the short term. Uh, and we do a lot there. And then on the long term, on the midterm first, you are looking at what we call sector coupling. Yes. Sector coupling is a very, very important topic, which is optimizing more than one domain or more than one industry. Meaning that the uh, output of a certain industry, power generation, could be an input for another industry. Yep. So we are taking uh, surplus uh, electricity from renewables, turning them into hydrogen, for example. Yep. And then we use this hydrogen for mobility, transportation, or a full stop for industry, or, or industry, whatever. or petrochemical, and so forth. So you are able to impact more, much more than the power generation. Uh, with this sector coupling and then you have a much bigger impact on the economy and on the environment. And then on the long term, we are really looking at uh, uh, zero carbon emissions. So advanced technologies, a lot of innovation that is still in the making yeah, yeah, right? yeah. To, to look at how you still have the security of supply without the intermittence of the renewable and in the same time you have the uh, storage solutions and the uh, environmental friendly solutions 100% embedded into your and, you know, you, we mentioned this morning. You mentioned this morning was that, and it's back to the the immediacy. I need electricity today. Right. And yeah, in the ideal world, we'd all transition to we'd all be at zero emissions already. Right. But my, meanwhile, in the real world, there are people in this region that have no electricity. And you guys are also taking a, let's say, a strategic approach to this. You're doing a lot in Iraq. Right. And, and and their their requirements for security supply are very different to right. what we have in Western Europe. Right. Iraq is a very good example to what we were just uh, discussing. When you look at Iraq, the most important topic in Iraq was flare gas. So okay. Iraq is flare. Iraq is the second or the third in the world which has flare gas, gas yeah. after Russia. I think it's the second or the third. Okay. So uh, one of the most immediate topics in Iraq is to capture flare gas. Can we can we use it? Or Absolutely. It? First, the first thing it does is that you can use it as a fuel, make electricity or whatever. Make electricity. Second, has a huge impact on the environment because the flare gas has CO2. Right. So we had solutions for Iraq, which was centered around the characteristics of the country, and uh, we made a, a roadmap together with the uh, Ministry of Electricity and Ministry of Oil that looks at fuel 
their gas, looks at local areas that need the electricity right now. These were the liberated areas after the um, you know, Iraq, yeah, Iraq situation uh, got settled. And then we looked at mid-term and short-term solutions that really looks at the entire network of the country and how you enhance transmission and how you reduce losses, all the way to uh, electric uh, meters or yep. electronic meters, smart meters for billing and collection and so on. But again, it's back to the what's needed in this local Absolutely. economy because we talk about terms at, the, at a conference like this about security supply. It means many things to different people and, 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 and you, you got to build a, build a block. Right. Now, speaking of building blocks, one of the other projects I keep an eye on that you guys are involved in is the, the Egypt Mega Project. And as projects go, it's aptly named. It's pretty mega. That's, yeah. that's massive. Right. Can you share what, what that is? Yeah, I, I think Egypt uh, is, is also another great example completely different than uh, the solutions which were needed for Iraq, yeah. but the same objective, which is the security of supply. Egypt had infrastructure, had uh, fuel, had a transmission network, but needed massive generation. Massive generation. We're and talking like 40% more, absolutely. right? We added around 14.8 gigawatts uh, in less than three years, in, in, in exactly 27 months, to the Egyptian national grid, with with um, uh, large combined cycle power plants using the state-of-the-art edge-class gas turbines from Siemens. This, these are turbines that run in combined cycle at higher than 61% efficiency. Okay. Uh, for, for the people listening to us, the higher the efficiency is, the less fuel you consume, and the less fuel you consume, yeah, the, the more course, energy you get. The out. more energy you get and the less emissions you have. So we put 24 of these gas turbines in Egypt in less than three years. And this was um, generating electricity enough for 40 million people uh, in, in Egypt, which was almost 40% additional capacity for the Egyptian network. The, 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 it's mega project. Right. It's, it's, it's one of the bigger ones in the world, I would imagine. You know? It is, it is. It was actually each of these three power plants on its own right was the largest combined cycle power plant in the world. And I think the, the interesting part of it was not only to build uh, a power plant, it was the entire um, ecosystem that was built around it. I want to tell you that we spent a lot of time and effort together with our Egyptian partners and customers uh -huh. to enhance the overall EHS uh, awareness in the country. We trained a lot of people around EHS. So trained the whole construction? Absolutely. Not only for the project, but just to really spread uh, EHS. They made in, in, in the country, in absolute, the, the whole absolute standards and absolute policies. We signed, when we had Egypt, we signed collectively with the Egyptian government, with our local suppliers, with our partners, a compliance pact. A pact that was shown to the entire community in Egypt, saying everybody working on this project will abide by a certain code of ethics in doing business, in, in, in respecting the environment, and so on and so forth. This is much bigger than the project. This is really putting a new culture. It's, it's, it's enhancing society uh, and whatever. Oh, wow, absolutely. okay. Well, yeah, no, it, it's fascinating. We're here in the Middle East. We often talk about in the US or in Western Europe about security supply and it means that, oh, well, it doesn't mean that light switch works now and again. Totally different problems here, totally different solutions. Absolutely. It means a lot of things, but I think to summarize, you must have your electricity flowing because that's the lifeblood of any society. Yep. You must do this in a responsible way and you must do this with a plan to go through the uh, reduction of CO2 and reduction of any emissions that is harmful for the environment. But these things need to come in, in, a, in, a, har in a way that it has harmony and comes in. You, can, you can't do it overnight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks. It was my pleasure.